up nerds welcome back to the channel my name is leslie smith and today on the nerdy narrative i'm going to be sharing my reading experience of a new author a new series and i did it by starting with book number five let me explain let me explain while this is labeled the fifth book in the series it's also labeled as a standalone. I'm going to talk about my feelings regarding if it's really a standalone or not after we get into it a bit. The book that I'm going to be talking about today is called The Brides of High Hill by Nevo and it is the fifth book in the Singing Hill Cycle series. What I can go ahead and tell you straight out from the beginning is I will absolutely be going back to read the first four books in the series because I need to verify my feelings of is this truly a standalone. Is it a complete story? Yes. In that regard, I would agree it's a standalone. But where I tend to disagree is in the beginning, it's a bit choppy because I truly feel it's written as though the reader should already be acquainted with the main character, the cleric, and this mention of an animal companion, almost brilliant. But for those of you who are like me and you want to use this novella to taste test the series and the author, if it's a new to you author, go right ahead. Just the beginning is a little bit choppy. All of the other characters are new characters and through them, through their interactions and conversations with the cleric, you are absolutely going to be able to figure out who this character is. And this character of this cleric is definitely one I'm interested to learn more about, which is why I want to go back and read the series because I believe the second, third, and fourth books follow this wandering cleric and I want to know more. This character loves stories. It seems they wander the countryside learning and sharing stories and that's just something that I find appealing. So why is it that I chose to start with book five? Well, I'll tell you. I was scrolling through NetGalley like I love to do every week and I saw the cover. I immediately recognized it as part of this series because I have seen Angela over at the channel Literature Science Alliance read and talk about the first few books in this series and it's one that she enjoyed. So the series was already on my radar and these covers, all of the covers in the series have a distinct style. It's just unmistakable. As soon as I scroll past it, I immediately stopped to look at it. I saw that it was book five, but I went ahead and took a peek at the book description. Right away, it tells you that it is a standalone. The next thing that caught my eye was this blurb. I want to read it to you. The Hugo award-winning series returns with its newest standalone entry, a gothic mystery involving a crumbling estate, a mysterious bride, and an extremely murderous teapot. Y'all, I immediately hit the request button. The cover, the author, the positive reviews I had seen of the series, notwithstanding, as soon as I saw that this was about a murderous teapot, I had to know. I have been dying to find out ever since, and I am so grateful to NetGalley and Tor.com for granting me an approval to read this series. I'm so glad they did because this type of story, this type of writing style, which I hope this novella is an example of how the four previous books are written, because if so, this is going to be a series that I'm going to want to collect on my shelves. But this writing style, it starts out with a very fairy tale, whimsical, beautiful quality. This young girl is embarking with her family to meet her possibly future husband. She's excited, she's nervous, and the cleric is there to escort the young girl and her family on this new branch of their life. I was caught up in the beauty and the wonder and the world building. So when the narrative shifted into a darker theme, I was going, now wait a minute. I mean, y'all know me, I am a horror lover. So once we get into the evil part of the fairy tale, I was all in. It does have a distinct gothic feel to it. So the horror vibes are muted and it's a little bit slower pace type of style, which I was all there for. The way that Nevo just introduced these elements, it starts out as little small things that you may not notice what's really happening and neither does the cleric in the story. So you're both experiencing this together. So when things really go south, you're just as surprised as the cleric and the ending, I never saw the ending coming. That's where the author 
really made a fan out of me because it was so unexpected from the way that it started. You know, I mentioned that fairy tale like quality. The way it ended was not fairy tale like at all, and I absolutely loved it. So, again, I say if the rest of the books in this series are like that, it's going to become a favorite series of mine, and you're going to be hearing me recommend it for years to come here on the channel. Now that I've read this book, and I've only read the one, but some other authors I would compare this novel to would be T. Kingfisher, certain ones of Lee Bardugo's books, and also Shauna McGuire. So if you're a fan of those three authors, especially the fantasy novels like Nettle and Bone and Thorn Hedge by T. Kingfisher, I think you would absolutely love this book. And it's a great one to use to try out the author in the series because it is a novella. I read this one in an afternoon. It's very easy to immerse yourself into and just fly through it once you get past a little bit of choppiness and disconnect at the beginning because like I said, I do feel it was written as though readers would already be acquainted with the main character, but that smooths out so, so quickly. So it doesn't interfere with the rest of the story for you. So I do think that readers of this series are going to get the most benefit as far as reading experience from The Brides of a High Hill. I'll have to let y'all know once I get started on the previous four books because it may just be how these books are written. That just might be part of the author's style. I'll have to read them for myself and find out and let y'all know in future reviews because they're absolutely coming. I enjoyed this book very much. I gave it four stars. I would absolutely recommend it to you. If you would like to pick up a copy and try it for yourself, it is out today, May 7th. I'll have the book linked in the description down below, as well as a link to the rest of the books in the series, as well as the author's website if they have one. So you can read and find out more about the author, see other published works. This is a Hugo award-winning series. So it seems to be pretty popular with its readers and seems like a good safe bet for you to try out. Thank you all so much for watching today. I hope you found this review useful. Please keep in mind that everything I discussed here is my opinion. The goal is by sharing my experience. I give enough information to help the book find the right reader. Have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you in the next one.